Well, the Rose family came to Brandeis, decided that they wanted to support financially the idea of a museum on campus. The beginning of the idea was that Mrs. Rose had this spectacular collection of china. So really the building was built with this focus that her china collection would be displayed in these large glass cabinets in the interior of the building along with some artwork. It became apparent that Brandeis's need was really a museum to display some of the artwork that had already been given before there ever was a Rose Art Museum. The cases were removed, the collection began. Very early on, uh, Sam Hunter came on board. He was a curator down at the Museum of Modern Art. The famous story is that the Gerberts Mnuchin families gave him $50,000 to go down and buy whatever he thought was appropriate. These are the cornerstone pieces of the collection. He was limited to $5,000 per purchase and went down to the studios in New York at the time, early 60s, mid 60s, and went into now famous artist studios, Lichtenstein and Jasper Johns and Klaus Oldenburg. That was the beginning of the spectacular collection. Well, what happens when you bring something like that into a museum collection, those pieces, the Gewurz Mnuchin pieces, people see that, the, oh, they have that in the collection, oh, they have that, and they have this very strong pop um, group of art, and they have a strong abstract expressionist group of art work, and if they have something in their holdings that they feel is important should go into a museum that has a similar kind of artwork, they are more likely to give it to that institution. That's part of the reason it grew. We're on the cusp of an amazing turnaround where we're having a tremendous renovation program taking place funded by Jerry Feinberg and has made an amazing transformation to the space. We are also celebrating the 50th anniversary of the museum. As you entered the building, you encountered a huge piece of what I call milk glass, and it didn't allow you to see into the space. And now you come in through a beautiful glass cube, which is an airlock to keep the environment in the museum sound. We also changed out all the railings, and they are now glass enclosures, so you see right through them to the wall space. The infamous reflecting pool in the lower part of the rows, which you either loved or you hated. Whatever you thought about it, it was not good for the environment of the art. It needed to go. It also provided us with a lot more floor space for potential sculpture or display cases. One of the hidden improvements is the uh, completely new HVAC system. We were running with a 50-year-old system that had new parts glommed onto it, and kind of a Rube Goldberg uh, system. Uh, now we have a state-of-the-art system, and uh, we're very, very happy about that. We got a tremendous bang for the buck. The, the architects that we worked with were spectacular. The construction people were great. We're very happy with the result people in the art world and artists themselves who were standing on the sidelines are now starting to embrace us again. Very gratifying to, to see the passion that revolves around this little museum and its huge collection.